So as, as Tristram has said, I'm going to be talking to you about involving young people in volunteering um, and how that can potentially be promoted um, as part of um, a careers education portfolio. Um, so as you'll have seen from Tristram and from Jonathan, um, that this is a part of a series of um, studies to develop, to develop the evidence base. Um, and in 2016, as, as uh, Tristram said, um, careers and enterprise company produced um, a report that took an overview of what evidence was out there. Um, and as you can see, volunteering came third. It's in that third column um, where there was limited evidence. Um, so really, our task was to um, explore a bit deeper um, to see if there was any further, further evidence out there um, and to summarise that. And just really to um, quickly summarise um, the key research questions that we were tasked with, um, because these were the same for, for all of us in the series. Um, so is there any evidence that can support the use of volunteering um, as a careers and enterprise activity? And what is the strength of that evidence? Um, what are the impacts and uh, what insights does the evidence offer us um, into uh, the effective use of volunteering? Um, so really what we did um, was looking at all school age young people, um, including people at colleges and up to higher education as well. We predominantly looked for evidence from the UK, um, although we did also, as Jonathan did, expand slightly into the US. Um, and we, similar to, to Jonathan, reviewed about 40 papers in the end, a mix of academic and grey literature, so some from uh, government and some big evaluations of, of volunteering programmes. And one of the reasons I think that we um, found a little bit more evidence than the 2016 research is because we slightly expanded the definition that we were using, really. So to begin at the beginning, um, what's the definition of volunteering? Um, and there's consensus in the literature that volunteering is time that is freely given, so non-compulsory, and it's unpaid work to the benefit of others. Um, and actually, it's only recently been accepted that volunteering can also be of benefit to the volunteer themselves. Um, for example, by providing um, them with skills or experiences to put on their CVs. Um, so as I mentioned, we um, widened our remit, our definition of volunteering, to also include um, social action volunteering. Um, and social action is defined as um, taking action to immediately uh, try and change the situation in your local or global community. Um, and that can include volunteering. It could also include campaigning um, or taking other action. Um, and so much of the evidence that we have refers to social action volunteering, so really trying to make the world a better place. Um, there are some blurred lines as well around um, this concept of freely given, freely given time. Um, non-compulsory. Um, so there are some volunteering activities that happen as part of education programmes. Um, they may have credits attached to them in order for you to gain a qualification. So I'd say the lines get slightly blurred then as to whether is how um, voluntary that activity really is if you want to gain that qualification. Um, there are also some programmes that have a set number of hours in order for you to achieve. Um, think of things like the Duke of Edinburgh where you, you have to volunteer for a certain amount of time. And also there are some um, job, out, job occupations where volunteering or having some kind of experience is a prerequisite even for entry into those, um, those jobs, thinking of things like conservation or medicine even. Um, so I also wanted to talk a bit more about the different types of volunteering. And as you can see, there's a kind of um, a line there from formal, semi-formal to informal. Um, and this was, this was quite widely used in the literature. And formal volunteering um, can be full-time. Um, it's for and with an organisation. A couple of examples there. Um, but it could also be, as I've mentioned, Duke of Edinburgh, where you really have um, an organisation supporting you behind that. Um, and it's a long-term commitment. Um, and as, as I mentioned before, they can be um, either as part of a course, so co-curricular, or um, external to, to education, um, extracurricular. Um, and then we have semi-formal uh, volunteering, so this is sustained or episodic part-time volunteering. Um, so this could also include the National Citizen Service, so NCS, 
um, would be an example here, and informal volunteering. So that would just be other unpaid help to support somebody who's not related to you. Um, so this is more likely to be one-off, as I've mentioned, um, perhaps part of a campaign or an event, and that can include um, micro-volunteering, and it may be um, enabled by digital services. And you'll see that actually you could also characterise those different types of volunteering by the length of time that um, the volunteering takes, over, takes place over. Um, so, so within the... Um, where have we gone? There we go. Uh, so within the, uh, the paper that we've written for the Careers and Enterprise Company, we touch a bit on um, the policy background. Um, and really, I think most of us would understand that volunteering is... Um, is long established as a part of British society. Um, and actually, it's been encouraged by successive UK governments. Um, you can think back to John Major's government, um, and there was a Make the Difference campaign. Um, New Labour encouraged it. Um, and then we can see in, in 2012, there was the Olympic Games and Paralympic Games, which was really a national movement with, with so many volunteers taking part to help enable that. Um, and most recently, of course, you can think of David Cameron's Big Society as well. So really there's been um, a government push for, for skills and employability um, connected with volunteering. And in some cases, volunteers are, are essential to keep some services going, as we've seen um, most recently. Um, so I also wanted to talk a little bit about participation. Um, and recent figures show that more young people are regularly taking part in volunteering than ever, ever before. Um, so that's a really positive and encouraging message to find from the evidence. Um, it does depend on the definition that's being used. Um, so often in the literature it talks about meaningful volunteering, and this is where it's of benefit to the person that is being supported and to the volunteer themselves. And it has happened to um, take place at least every few months over the past 12, 12 months. Um, or it could have been a one-off substantial activity that took place for more than a day. Um, and there was one survey that showed um, about 42% of 10 to 20-year-olds took part in meaningful social action in 2015-2016. Um, but if you use a looser definition of just helping at least once um, over the last 12 months, up to 81% of 16 to 24-year-olds have participated in volunteering using that definition. So really high numbers. I say it does depend on, on the definition that you're using. Um, and what do they take part in? Well, the sport is the biggest single area um, that, um, for the uh, for volunteering activity. Um, and who takes part or not, and really it is related.